I would like to check if you have a Sassicaia from Italy. We have just one bottle. Could you keep it for me? Uh, so today you coming? Yeah, today. Okay. 한병 남았대, 한 병. 그리고 영업 시간 지금 끝날려 그래요. 아, 서둘러 가야겠다. Do you have a Opus One? Yes, I have. Insignia. We have one bottle. Oh, one bottle. Silver Oak and Stack Slip Wine Cellars, Cabernet Sauvignon SLV, Napa Valley. The Tignanello, Valbuena Cinco, Valbuena Number Five. Yes, I have one bottle left. Okay, then could you keep uh, those uh, six bottles for me? I'll get there in two hours and a half. Robert Mondavi Reserve uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Clo Apelta, Alma Viva. I could put those in the paid will call side of the store. Okay, for sure. 스승님들을 대접하기 위해서 이렇게 또 고속도로를 또 탔어요. 와인샵을 오늘 세 군데를 갑니다. 하루 종일 와인 사야지. Yeah. So no oh, Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. You haven't told us anything. That's the purpose. <laughs> Are we doing it blind? Of course. Okay. What is your favorite part? Have at it. Reds or whites? Reds. <laughs> oh, 110 degrees. Are you kidding me? So today we are going to do VGS tasting. Very good shit. Very good shit. And I prepared. As I said to you last time with the VGS tasting, it isn't VGS until I say it's VGS. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I prepared uh, 10 bottles, which are extremely popular here in America and also in Asia, in South Korea and in Japan. Okay. And uh, we do it blind. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious, okay. <laughs> and as you see, I prepared the icebox. Yes, it's a hot day today, and so we're not going to have hot red wines. We'll have cellar temperature or cool red wines. Exactly. We were yeah. waiting for their miserable asses. <laughs> are you wearing this Bank of California hat in an attempt to prove that you are a banker instead of a wanker? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing it because I didn't know how much sun we'd be catching, and yeah. You want to put the, the hat there, right? Why would you touch it? <laughs> <laughs> this little innocent wine tasting just turned into a super spreader event. <laughs> right. And uh, did you turn off your phone? You know why I'm turning off my phone? No. Because I don't want you guys to know no one would call me. <laughs> because it's just me who called you. So when I was doing my medical training, we carried a beeper. And so sometimes we'd use that when we wanted to get out of a situation. If you were around some people you didn't want to be with, you would then tell your friend, call up, have me paged. <laughs> when the beeper would go off. I've done that too. Go off and then say, excuse me, is it an emergency I have to attend to? I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I prepared the 10 bottles, but I also don't know which one is which one. Second one may be slightly corked. Wow, oh, that's corked. And uh, what can you do when it's corked? <laughs> it's just a question. It's fucking alcohol, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Drink this shit. And you don't mean that. You don't drink that shit. <laughs> so when you have a corked bottle of wine, you simply return it. Return it uh, if it's at a restaurant, alert the server. If, if you've bought it from a retailer, uh, return it to the retailer. Return it when it's corked. Yeah. So what's interesting is that people vary in, uh, for almost any of these flavor compounds that we talk about, in terms of their ability to pick up levels. Each person is a threshold level, and it can vary fairly dramatically from one taster to another. Largely it's a curse because you taste it and then you focus upon it and then you can't drink that wine. Whereas if somebody doesn't pick it up, mm -hmm. they can drink the wine. Actually, 
I know what、uh, the second one is because when I tasted, I thought it was quirk, but wanted the solution. I wanted、uh, no, to show the solution to the subscribers. And it's quirk. The bottle is a one hundred dollar bottle.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, return Bullshit. it. <laughs> Boo! Fucking shit.、Bull、Peter, you, you, you you're, you're bleeding. You're now like a purple beard. <laughs> Sorry. You've heard of black But, beard and. <laughs> it's just when Jay starts to tell such shit, to talk such shit, that I get mad. Hundred <laughs> dollar, my ass. It wasn't even fucking hundred dollars. It was maybe a hundred dollars a case.、Uh, I forgot to say that I spent more than two thousand dollars. What? Wow. These ten bottles. Holy shit! <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, I really spent more than two thousand dollars. Holy shit! And that one is a Clua Palta. Huh? The second one, the court one, is a Clou Aperta. Really? Yeah. No,、oh, which is which is、uh, often、be. a just delicious bottle of wine. Yeah.、Um. I didn't lie, and this is the cheapest one here. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. I've got thousands of、uh, requests for us to taste. Mm -hmm. And then I selected、uh, the the most popular ones in those countries. That makes sense. So they were just tired of hearing us talk bullshit. They want us. <laughs> you only spend two thousand dollars. Don't you know that when you go to the trouble of making Patrick and I work on a fucking Saturday, which, by the way, is my Sabbath, you better fucking bring two bottles to the party of each one, <laughs> <laughs> just in case there's one broken like that. I'll do that next time. Okay, my fee goes up though for next time. All right, because you've already fucked with me. <laughs> the fact that he's not been drinking wine, he's gotten grouchier. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize their quality.、Mm -hmm. Well, they're kind of wines that I could see myself drinking, but only after they've been bottle aged for five to ten years, and then they can be glorious. Patrick, what do you think about the first wine? Fairly deep in color, though with some clearing at the rim. So that's telling us that the wine has a little bit of age on it. Not as deeply colored as some of the other wines. I got some cassis, lead pencil, and oak on the nose, as well as plum and some slight diacetyl or buttery character on the finish, but very slight. Full-bodied, medium acidity, 14, 14.5 percent alcohol. Fairly ripe tannins. There were some dry wood tannins on the finish. Though overall, complex, well-made Cabernet Sauvignon-based wine, probably with Merlot in it. Good to very good quality. In terms of honing in as to where, my initial impression was that this was a New World Napa Valley、uh, Cabernet Sauvignon、uh, Merlot combo. I agree with you on almost everything that you've said. And the reason that I probably would have erred more towards the New World than ripe Bordeaux was this、uh, diacetyl, slight diacetyl character I got on the finish. I don't get any of the quince character from no, Chile. But you know, at this level, the、yeah. wines might might not have it. Mark up, young. Well. Also, Jay's doing this partially blind. Oh, Jay's doing it blind too. Oh, okay. Oh, so、It's、we have to get、right. we have to get Jay's input. No, absolutely, we need、no. his input. Anyway, I'm going to edit out my old part, so it's all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we just proceed. The first one, Opus One. Opus, Opus One. One. And the vintage, 2015. So I'm not surprised about all the things we said with the Bordeaux dance, because look who's involved. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's an elegance to the wine that. You often don't see in Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignons. A seriously good wine, but I do want to tell you, all the wines got good scores from me. That's the lowest for the consumer, for the people watching this. Opus One, and I have a, a reasonable amount of experience with Opus One, are wines that can be delicious young, but by and large, they're wines that improve dramatically over a five, ten. 15, 20 year period of time. So when you're buying these wines and you're drinking them young, you're paying a premium in price because of reputation. And to fully get that premium in terms of flavor, you need to be patient and age the bottle for at least five, if not ten years. You know, I must admit, perhaps because I'm not a spring chicken anymore, but I must admit that that's not what I do these days. If a wine's good. It needs to be good right now, and if it's good right now, drink this shit. So,、um, yeah, 
you know, if I've got so much wine in my cellar that I can buy five or six bottles of Opus One and not look at it hungrily every time I go past it, you know, no problem. Otherwise, I want to pull and drink. And I like to think that I have sufficient experience to say, oh, in two years time, it would have had this, that and the other and I can taste it right now. <laughs> People buy wines for different purposes, right? What did you mean by spring chicken? Spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> a newly hatched bird, a uh, young bird. Uh, what I was trying to say is that I'm not 25 anymore. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Patrick said there are many reasons. Mm -hmm. I buy wine for one of two reasons. Sell or drink. Mm -hmm. right That's it. Now, right? Absolutely. For investment purposes, blue chip wines and Opus One would be considered a blue chip wine from California. I tell you what. You give me the money that you would have spent on wine. I will invest it in the market. I will immediately pay you what you spent on the wine. I will then take the money. I'll make 5% a month on your money. Bullshit! <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> I agree with you. I'll make 5% a month on your money. Bullshit! Well, uh, uh, except that you're, that an ungrate money. you're an ungrateful rich, so I'll make 5% a month on my money, okay? <laughs> And you can drink your pricey Opus one. Get on with it, man. Who's got all day? <laughs> all right. Anyway, the first one is the most expensive one for today. Uh, what? 350. 350. Yeah. My least favorite. So we'll see what the others are. Not my least favorite one. Probably my second favorite one of the, uh, okay. of the flight. Peter? Third. Wine number three. Again, it was a big wine, opaque, ruby. There wasn't all that much on the nose. A sort of New World character, um, some sweet oak. It doesn't have the powerful cassis that the first one had, but I, I still think I'm in Bordeaux blend country. And then on the palate, it was just amazing. Amazingly structured, sexy, minerally, a little bit too exuberant. The only thing that's, that, that detracted slightly from the wine for me was its pushiness. This wine was not getting big marks for subtlety. And now what do you think? And I, well, hold on, Peter has more to say. Beautiful wine, um, Bordeaux blend. I thought this was Napa Valley. I'm also a Bordeaux blend. This was probably my favorite wine of the, of the group. It's my second favorite. I got leather on it, cassis, the cherry, the plum, the oak. So it's complex. I thought it was, had very good length. I won't argue with you, absolutely yeah, beautiful. Very wine. nice one. Yeah. Let's see what it is. All right. This one is my favorite one in this group. This is your favorite? In and, this group, oh! And it was Patrick's favorite too. Yeah. My favorite is the next one. All right, thank you. The next one. Uh, let's see what your favorite is, since it cost you a pair of trousers and a tank top and a t-shirt. Tank top. And uh, a glass of Opus One. I didn't like it that much, so it's all right. <laughs> Shit happens. Wine spills. It's all right. Well, he said he was getting excited, and <laughs> that was proof. That's true. All right, then the third one. The third one is Mondavi. Robert Mondavi. Mondavi, the reserve. Love this one. And what's the vintage? 2015. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful one. One of the most famous vineyards in all of Napa. Exactly. Yeah. And then the fruit for the reserve. I think there's some Tokelon fruit, but there's also... It says Tokelon. So the Tokelon uh, vineyard is one of the most famous vineyards in Napa Valley. Really beautiful wine. Yeah. How much was that? 150. A comparative bargain. Yeah. yeah. It is very interesting because we tasted some cheap range of uh, Mundavi wines named Isabel Mundavi. And it was uh, shit. Well, it was terrible. Yeah. It's owned by a big company today. So you have... Um, the wines coming from the Napa Valley, mm -hmm. the Mondavi wines, generally tend to be very good. A very good quality at a, at a range of, uh, of price points. Then they have a coastal range and then also the Woodbridge range, the uh, Woodbridge range coming from the Central Valley, and those are completely different. Whose chance is this one? I think mine. Yeah. Okay. Val uh, what's your name? Not Valerie. <laughs> Remind me again. <laughs> Valeria. Valeria. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is by far my favorite. So number four, garnet, medium garnet red in color. There's some slight purple still left in it, some clearing at the rim. It's a slight leafiness to it, though attractive mm. leafiness on the nose. Lead pencil, cherry, 
some raspberry, plus oak, and a little diacetyl on the finish here. Fairly firm tannins when I initially tasted it, though it's not as firm right now. It's another beautiful wine. At the same time, both ripe and elegant. I think if there's Cabernet Sauvignon, New World, because of the diacetyl, I would say New World, and I'd be in the more apt to be Napa Valley. When you say diacetyl, it's about buttering. A slight butteriness on the finish. So, you know, all the wines go through 100% malolactic for red wines. So. But ah. you usually don't get buttery characteristics, yeah, yeah. unless they're very ripe. This dance was a lot quicker for me. I ruled out, but I went straight to Napa Valley here, mainly Cabernet Sauvignon, if not all of it. It had that beautiful minerally character. It was better behaved than the previous wine, sort of slightly better manners with the more the slightly increased elegance of this wine and I'm always been an elegance guy I like this you look especially elegant today <laughs> <laughs> I love your pants <laughs> these are my elegant pants yeah what did you say chicken jump spring chicken yeah, spring chicken <laughs> <laughs> you got the springers jumping I wish pal I wish number four stag's leap stag's, stag's leap. leap another classic uh, wine yeah, SLV Excellent wine. Yeah. 2015. Awesome. Yeah, very nice. And how much did that cost? 140. Even a better buy as far as I'm concerned. Fucking fantastic. So you look happier eventually than the beginning. Happier so, than what? <laughs> than the beginning. <laughs> beginning of the tasting. Because you complained about uh, not tasting white wine. But you see, the, the more he complains, the happier he gets. He needs a certain amount of complaining <laughs> right. and bitching right. to get... And particularly if I can complain and bitch on camera, <laughs> where I know that I can see myself in full flight if I just log on. <laughs> We've had three Napa Valley wines, mm -hmm. and they've been, for Napa Valley, elegant wines. There are styles of Napa Valley wines that are much more extracted in terms of their kick not as elegant or as balanced as these wines that sometimes can cost much more. You see wines like this that are so expensive and you say, you know, who are these guys to charge these kind of prices? But you taste the wines, you balance them off against similarly priced wines from the rest of the world and you realize they're not expensive. No, no. And what you also realize is that these guys know what they're doing. No, yeah. You are talking about terribly gifted people here who are fortunate enough to live in a world where there are a bunch of other terribly ungifted people working on similar terroirs with absolutely dissimilar results. So I mean, I'm excited about these yeah, wines. Yeah, so am I. So we're going to do number five. This is my least favorite wine. This is quieter. I found this one a little subdued, a little bit bitter on the finish, a little bit volatile this one. And I found it to be very New World, but specifically not Napa. I was less keen on it than you were, and it seemed a bit burnt, jammier, dried fruit, and even some raisin. Mm -hmm. And I got also some diacetyl on it. So for me, this is a riper wine that has had some of the wines turned to raisin. And when that happens, it makes it harder for me to place it exactly. And I found this raisin characteristic that got in the way for me. Balbuena Cinco. 2014. It's a 150. This is still was my least favorite of no, the four I'm, wines. I'm, you liked it more than I did. It was my third favorite. So there's only one wine that I liked less than this, which happened <laughs> to be the Opus One. Mm -hmm. These were all fine wines. Sometimes to fully evaluate it, it's not just the snapshot of tasting it. One needs to go back and see how the wine develops in the bottle half an hour, 45 minutes an hour later. If the second half is as shit as this, can I leave now? <laughs> Jeez, Christ. <laughs> well. <laughs> Remember, this is the weekend, eh? I get time and a half on the weekends. I feel quite some VA yeah. during the fifth one. Take this shit away and bring us new stuff, okay? I don't know why we do this when we could be on the beach with all those throngs getting sick. Why would we do this? Are we going to taste these again? These? Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Just, <laughs> just checking. Do you want to taste some of them again? No. No? No, no, I'm on diet. But I'm also a wine guy. The god of dieters will forgive me if I take the hot sip here. <laughs> In fact, the god of wine would punish me if I don't. You spend your life preparing for a, a flight like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just the beginning of our journey. Well, thank you mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, we seldom use this area, but this is a ni very nice place yeah. back here. Yeah. 
it takes visitors and renters to show you where you live. That's too pale, throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> My wine is about to be labeled. It's bottled. So it'll go in the water in a few days' time. It'll be here in October. Terrific. I look forward to tasting it. Jay and Actually, I have tasted it. It was okay. <laughs> no more for you. <laughs> I'm not coming to the next tasting. You're not coming to the next tasting? No, because if you're going to do the same kind of tasting, you're not going to do $2,000 worth of wine. You're going to do $250 worth of wine. And fuck you. How did you get to know? <laughs> Peter, you don't mind my talking while you're tasting, do you? And so I... I'm fucking deaf for a start. Yeah. Just wipe, wipe the wine off your face. Uh. <laughs> How do you know it's wine? It could be blood. <laughs> I haven't seen Jay. Jay hasn't backhand you uh, once today, but... Uh. <laughs> I tasted these wines in a different order than either one of you did. Why did you do that? Did you check the colors first? I checked the colors. So I went from the lightest colored wine mm -hmm. to the darker wines. And uh, why did you do that? I mean, generally, as a rule of thumb, lighter colored wines tend to be lighter bodied, or can be. With some varieties, it doesn't really matter, but generally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to get any better, but I might get drunker. <laughs> so the, the first wine for me was a little bit problematic in this lineup in that it's mildly reduced and slightly medicinal. I think it's a European wine, potentially some Bordeaux varieties. In the end, for what it's worth at all the dance, I stayed with Europe, I went to Bordeaux. But to be quite honest, I, it's not my favorite. These wines had both high amounts of tannin and yet they lingered long on the palate, which to me is a sign of quality. Could you stop uh, rubbing your microphone? What do you want to rub my dick instead? What do you want? <laughs> Because you continue to rub your microphone. It's itchy. Well, it can't differentiate the microphone from the d That's the... <laughs> the price just went up. What can yeah. I tell you? I get some anise on here. When I get anise, I'm uh, frequently in Italy. Though I, you can have some anise with, with Bordeaux blends. Earthiness, I had some cherry. And initially I thought, is this super Tuscan Bordeaux varieties with Sangiovese? That was my dance. You super Tuscan. Although could be could be Bordeaux as well. I, I can't get to Tuscany on this. Doesn't mean I'm right. Probably means you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> how many fing how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> uh, this is the tenth or fifteenth one. How would I know how many fingers you're holding up? <laughs> Let's see what it is. All right. Number six. Tignanello. The Fanculo. <laughs> Well done, Patrick. Well done. 2016. How much did this cost? 125. I got to Bordeaux with this. Well, that's their purpose. Yeah. So wine number seven, a bit lighter in color. You can see through it. With clearing at the rim, I can see through it. I can read my yeah. notes. Earlier when I smelled it, I had this very potent aroma of dill, which to me is American oak. There's some earthiness. There's a bit of cherry berry. I get a lemony characteristic. Very strong degree of oak and firmer than you would expect by the color and a very nice wine. I'm in the same place. And in terms of uh, quality? In the middle. In the middle. Yeah. And number seven. Silver oak. Silver oak. Now, silver oak uh -huh. is one of the few Cabernet Sauvignons in California that's 100% American oak. Okay. <laughs> What's the vintage? 15. And the price is? 115. That's the COVID price. There is no under 100. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one would be numero wheat. Yes. And looking at the color, it's lighter like some of the others. The nose was not that different from the silver oak. I wondered whether there were some Rhone varieties here and quickly ruled them out. It's a warmer wine, sort of in the, the bready character. It's got lots of tannin, a hint of herbaceousness to it. A lovely minerally character. I do think there's some Bordeaux varieties in here, so I probably have to go for the New World. I thought it was a bit more green than you did. I got quince here, so when I, oh, I put my nose okay. in this wine, I thought it was Chile. It's Could you explain a little bit more about Quincy? Quincy, yeah. Quincy! Green, a green character. There's a fruit 
called quince that has a green characteristic but also a sweet fruity characteristic as well. It's like a sour apple. Yeah, I love Quincy too. You love Quincy? Yeah, but when you mention about Quincy, what do you mean by it? Pleasantly green, spicy uh, characteristic. And for me that's usually the not always Chile. Thought this was uh, Cabernet Sauvignon based wine. There could be some Carmenere in here as well. All right, number eight. Alma Viva. Well done, Patrick. In 2017, and the price, 145. We were getting there at least. You got Chile, I at least got Bordeaux varieties. Number nine, the lightest in color of the, of the group. This is where I started. And it's also got a lot of clearing at the rim and some trace brick changes. And I vacillated on this when I first tasted it. Vacillated, that's a big word. Yeah, I didn't get the meaning of it. Means you fucked the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so vacillated means altering, changing, going back and forth. So I went between uh, this being Sangiovese and this being Pinot Noir. It's a little bit leafy, a bit fuller body than I anticipated by the color. Hoya, <laughs> um, Thanks, uh, what's your name again? Valeria. Valeria, okay, thanks Valeria. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Valeria, ah. Uh. <laughs> it's minerally, it's classy. I'm with Bordeaux varieties here. It could be Europe. I love this one, by the way. I love this one. Is this your favorite? No. I think the next one, which is a hit against myself, uh -huh. because it's so big, I think the next one's my favorite, but I love this. If I think about Peter Koff, my quest for power... Um, You're sounding like Donald Trump, a quest for power. Yeah, yeah. Now that I'm, I'm talking in the context of wine. I'm looking for the iron fist in the velvet glove, which is a, a very European... Number nine. I'm hoping this is famous, because it feels to me like it should be. It's very famous. Okay. Another Italian one. Wow. Sassicaia. Sassicaia. 2017. Now this is way better than the Tignanello. Uh, Not that the Tignanello was shit, but this is way better. Vintage? 17. And price 185. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Wow, oh, that's good. <laughs> that is really... I'm gonna drink this. That is good. Are you going to join the next tasting? What's the next tasting? <laughs> a little bit uh, lesser wines, but good wines. No, you, you made a terrible mistake from a marketing perspective. You showed us the best wines first. Now the next time we come, you have to double the price. And then the next time you have to triple the price. <laughs> You're greedy. You're fucked. <laughs> He's being cute. I was always cute, I love you. <laughs> Numero 10. So it's a very deep garnet color, deepest color of, of the wines that we've had. It was pretty tight on the nose, some slight green notes, lots of new French oak, some red fruit. I had a little bit of anise there that was taking me initially to Italy, and then tight, firm tannins. And then when I go back to this, to me is very overtly oaked, ripe, New World wine. So I think this is a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. It's, to me, Quincy, and then all the other things that you said. New World, Cabernet-based wine, very, very good. Number 10. Insignia. Insignia. 2016. And the price, 220. It was my best wine of the flight. And it wasn't mine, just because the oak to me dominated the wine. Hmm. There are other styles that I prefer, though for that style of wine, of somebody who likes a really big, very lusciously oaked New World Cabernet Sauvignon, they've done a, done a very good job. And what was your favorite one in this play? Tignello. Tignanello. Yeah. Give me a little bit You've more got, of that, please. Peter, you're having a... <laughs> got paper or something on your lip. <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck's mouth is it? <laughs> you can glue whatever you want onto your lips, so it did. <laughs> They've gone to the lower lip. <laughs> you guys are so fucking picky. It's still there. It's in the right lower corner. <laughs> Where is it? Right. Lower lip, right side. Yeah. Now it's right in the corner. You can... We good now? 
Yeah. I can't, I can't spore already. <laughs> I'm very impressed with Patrick and his Tignanello sassy kaya. Well can done, Patrick. Even the blind pig can sometimes <laughs> find a truffle. <laughs> Cheers. Jay, thank you. Wonderful wines. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you really what are you doing to that napkin? <laughs> you, stop talking. <laughs> what, Tignanella, please. Tignanella? He's very bossy. No, no, no. Tignanella, yeah. <laughs> He's an actual boss. <laughs> Le Sessicaya, s'il te plaît. And then I have to go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Before you go, could you pick three best wines among uh, these ten. So, my three best wines, Insignia, uh, Stagsleep SLV, and Sassicaia. Those are my three best. And how about you, Patrick? Yeah, I agree with Peter on the SLV, and then I would Teen Yellow, Mondavi Reserve, and I'm gonna give an extra bonus one uh, and the Opus one. I love the Mondavi Reserve, no doubt about it. No, I did not like the Opus one. Opus one's price is almost a triple of almost all the others. Just goes to show you, it's more important to build a brand than a wine. <laughs> and also, it's my opinion. Now I gotta go somewhere, I gotta meet my wife there. Right. If I get there, and then I gotta meet my wife there, and then she's gonna say you're drunk, and then I'm gonna fight with her, and then tomorrow I'll be divorced, and it's your fault. <laughs> and you come back to Valerie, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Could you do just one more thing? Could you like what? One bottle of wine, if somebody wants to buy that wine for their newborn baby. Oh. No, I'm not going to pick a wine like that. You should not be making newborn babies drink. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> Jay. No, to, to keep uh, that bottle for... For 21 years? Yeah, 21 years. Sassicaia. Sassicaia? You know, why is it so? Because I said so. What's your problem? There's a balance in the sassicaia. It's not over exuberant. Fruit is well contained. There's an inherent balance to the wine right now, mm -hmm. even though it's not my favorite. Gives it the potential to age for 21 years as well or better than any of these. Which would you pick for the 21 year run? <laughs> That's my comment. I have to ask Patrick. Bye, Peter. You're in you know, such a hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Just, just, <laughs> where, just where a do, second, please. I want to take this off and smash it to bits. Where do I do that? <laughs> it's really a nasty. So the Sasakaya, the Stag's Leap, and the Opus. If you have to select just one bottle to recommend for the newborn baby, Stag's Leap. Stag's Leap. Yes, sir. Stag's Leap. Stag's Leap. You should stop to rub the microphone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is he doing? I just want to get... <laughs> Terrible. So was it good? Was it good for you too? Wonderful. Yeah, it was oh, good. good for me. Okay. Just check it. Our subscribers really insisted uh, for me to treat you with uh, good wines. Outstanding ones. Uh, thank you very much. It was a, a beautiful tasting. Don't send me the bow. This bill's ridiculous. I wouldn't pay it if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> I shall depart. Okay. Adieu. Adieu, you Jew. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying. I'm laughing. <laughs> Great wine makes you laugh so hard you tear up. <laughs> that is true. That's bad. Thanks, Peter. Cheers, Jay. Lovely tasting. Thank you. Now you've got my appetite completely stimulated for an environment which I'm not allowed to fucking eat. Thank you. My wife is going to be on your ass tonight, I'm telling you. What did you do to the guy? He's so fucking grumpy. And please, uh, let's talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get the result. <laughs> it's, you too. It's first time to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Would you like a little glue? We could glue some of that napkin on you for the party or wherever you're going. It's almost you know, Halloween You guys time. need to be look, careful. Look at the bright side. It's that by gluing some, some napkin on you, it'll detract from the view of people of those, of those you, orange you and yellow trousers of yours. You don't know what you do. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> to friends. Then, clo I might, you close my thing. I need to make sure that it's closed. And it needs, it needs a beautiful hat as well. 이럴 땐 이 와인 네이버 밴드로 놀러 오시면 와인을 잘 몰라도 편하고 싸게 사실 수 있도록 제가 많이 도와드립니다. 
다들 만족하시고 좋아하시더라고요